and he wants to like be everywhere in the church. But I was looking at him and said, Kai, my spirit was not going with him. And the one that paid him most was that every inch I see was with him and the young lady in our church. And he wasn't making friends with the boys. I was pissed off. So when I began to like, I said, let's call this man and ask him. And when we invited him, which assembly do you come from? Because you are not Mekisedek that will just appear from nowhere. Which assembly did you come from? He mentioned the name of the village and then we asked him, have you been baptized because he was taking Holy Communion too? He said, yes, I've been baptized. Can you give us one of the elders, what the, the, one, the number of one of the elders of that church? He said, he doesn't have, okay. Give us one of the names. Even if we don't have, we can find out and then reach out to them. He said, he doesn't know any of their names. And I said, what? You are from a church, an assembly, and you don't know any names of one of your elders. And then we say, okay, no problem. When we go for the next conference, we'll go to that village and find out. He said, okay, no problem. He left the church that day and he never showed up again. Are you getting that? We're passing through situation before it gets too late. Learn none and have a change. Now, Elijah. <clears throat> we need to think about what had happened to Elijah three days earlier. We have discussed that. Now, it was a huge moment in the life of Elijah. The power of darkness had been discredited. Uh, he had challenged the political and spiritual leaders who have dealt with that already. Now, Elijah was on that tremendous physical, emotional, and spiritual stress. And so, it was not surprising that he completely got stressed out and suffered a breakdown. Yes, Elijah was exhausted. He had given everything he possibly could. Elijah was completely drained and he lost all perspective on life. How did we know? He ran away from the people, from the body of Christ, and went to into the wilderness. And it was known that he was hungry, but now depression has set in. So all he could do was to go down and sleep. One thing that is different from the state of Elijah and ours is that he didn't commit any sin. He was walking with the Lord, but, but, but he was overwhelmed by the circumstances around him. And then the only thing, the missing link was I didn't pray, didn't see the face of God before he ran. But God knowing that he is a soldier for him was following him everywhere that he went. This was at a point that Elijah was thinking he was alone. And when God came to him first through the angel of God, he gave him food to eat. And when he ate food, he allowed him to sleep. And when he slept, he woke him up again and gave him another food to, to, to eat. And when he had eaten, he said, look, the journey that you are going to take is a long one, but you have not taken the right direction. You have to go back to the way of Damascus. I don't know why Damascus, Damascus becomes very, very important. Because it's on that way of Damascus that Paul encountered the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember? Do you remember? On the way of Damascus. So he told him that you have to retrieve your step. This morning is about the time that we need to change our step. We need to look at ourselves, reorganize ourselves, and then withdraw from where we are that is not, you know, compatible with God. He said, you must go the way of the wilderness. And that is the way of, that leads to, that, 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 that leads to Damascus. That is the path you will take. The one that you have taken here is on your own. You made a journey of one day. It's on your own. And then he decided to move from that path. And the place that God showed him moved him into the Mount Horeb. That Mount Horeb was not called the Mount of God. And some Bible recorded that is the same thing as Mount Sinai. And then it's now compared to the journey of Moses in the wilderness from Egypt to the land of Canaan. And when Moses came to Sinai, he had an encounter with God. On this Mount Horeb, also Elijah had an encounter. God said, number one, you are not alone on this matter because at that time Elijah was already worried. He said, I am the only one left. 
And what does he mean? The only prophet left, that was his thought. But God revealed to him then that look, there are other 7,000 prophets of God that have never bowed their knee before any gods. And they have not soiled their mouth also. And not only that, he revealed to him that as you move on, this is what you are going to do for me. And when the angels spoke to him and Elijah, I mean Elijah moved close to the mountain. Now the first thing that happened was earthquake that happened, but God was not there. God was not in the fire. Neither was he in that breeze. But there was a very little voice that spoke. That spoke. And Bible recorded that Elijah went and hid his face under his mountain. And I remember the Garden of Eden. In the time when the breeze was cold, God appeared. He said, oh man, where are you? This was a time that the man was already hiding from God. Because of what? He has committed that which God said he should not. When your mind is focused on that cross and the agony that the Lord Jesus has passed through, then you cannot do anything differently but to keep yourself unto that your Lord that is capable of keeping you even unto the coming of his day. The one that is capable of delivering you from that difficult situation, you must keep yourself for him. And in the moment of that, Elijah started hearing the voice. You are going to carry out three assignments. Number one, God will help us in Jesus' name. You want to anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And you anoint Jehu, son of Nimsi, to become king over, uh, over Israel. Then you anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Ebermehola, to be prophet in your own room. These three warriors that God has chosen were meant for a purpose to fight the enemies of God. That anyone that escaped Hazel will be taken over by Jehu. And if anyone escaped Jehu, then Elisha must come and deal with that person. A message that came to Elijah after God had revamped him. And what did God use in revamping him? There were three things. He used food, he used sleep, and then he used his words. Right? One was physical. The second one, sleep, was also physical, but it has spiritual undertone. Then the next one was the words of God. What you can hold on to that can redeem you in this difficult situation is the word of God. Don't go it alone. Now, look at the life that Elijah was. Elijah, in a state of confusion, was running away because death was planned upon him. Jesus didn't run. The difference. Then the same Elijah that was running away so that he could not be killed because the problem had become too much was now begging God that his life may be taken. But the difference, he didn't contemplate suicide. He begged God to take him, not for him to take himself. Can you see the difference? God will help us in Jesus' name. Tell that your problem to God. God is capable. It is in such a time that we practically forgot the powerful phrase. Jesus took all our pain when he died on the cross. The importance of the cross. May God help us. And then we'll go on to see that in the story of Elijah's depression, we see that God has physically restored him. He emotionally restored him through the power of future. He spiritually restored him by bringing him back to sacred place, the Mount Horeb. That was where God took him to. And then we dare to see that we should learn to say no to sinful relationships. Prepare ourselves ahead of time. Some of us are there quickly. That when we are students in school, you are students now. You don't prepare yourself ahead of time. And when you do not prepare yourself towards that examination, then you have succeeded in preparing yourself to fail. And when lecturers found that you are not performing well exceptionally, then they can tap and exploit on that.
by telling you to do A, B, and C with them before they can give you the right mark. But if you are one that prepares yourself, don't wait until the timetable is placed before you begin to read. Waiting until the exam becomes too close before you start reading also is a source of what? Depression, confusion. My daughter is here. When she was preparing for jump, the day she was, I mean, the, the next day she was about two or three days she was going to write, you know, government. And the mother found that she was restless. She was restless. And when the mother asked her, he said, government is too wide. And the mother told me, I went to her, I said, look, the reason why you are not having heart attack as a young lady is because you never prepared. But now, this is what you do to yourself. Select topics with faith and begin to read to cover those ones because you can't cover up again. Government is really wide. And I started telling her, if you are going to do this, do this. If you are going to do this, then select. If there's nobody to talk to, that alone can cause a problem. Because the lecturers you have are very intelligent. They can read in your continents and know that they're having trouble. So they can exploit. You need to be very careful. And then again, I'll ask why is it that it is you that is attracting the attention of this lecturer? Then you ask yourself, what kind of dress did you put on? How do you appear? Some of our young men today wear trousers that shows them so for people that they are crazy guys. Am I correct? They are hardened boys. They can carry out the assignment. And what happens when court guys see this kind of people that are hardened and the kind of hairstyle that you keep, they will invite you. And if you make yourself available for court guys to invite you, then really you are in trouble. Because saying no is a problem. Joining them is a problem. And when you join them, the slogan is that there's only one way in and there's no what? There's no what? No way out. So be careful. And the game for the ladies, you dress with pinky skirt. You don't wear trousers in the church here, but when you leave here to the, to the, to the university, you begin to wear trousers. When you go to the university, you begin to speak in tongues because this church is nothing to you anymore. You are no longer studying the Bible. What you do is that pastor this say, pastor that say. Isn't it? And then when lecturer look at you with the kind of painting that you are carrying on, the kind of pinky skirt you are wearing, and all of that, the lecturer see you as one of the daughters of Jezebel. And the eyes are set on you. And when you say no, because the, the, the word of God that is in you, you have now, you have now brushed up the ego of this lecturer. I, the lecturer teaching you mathematics, said you are to sleep with me and you say no, you have now brushed up his ego and he wants to ensure that he dominates you. So in this case, you showed yourself to them and they are now exploiting you, be you boy or a girl. So we have, so our time is up. We have done the breath out and breath in. Learn to stay let, learn to say no to sinful relationships. Prepare yourself ahead of time. Don't wait for examination title to be out before you start reading. Where the station of stress is noticed, share with others. Don't attempt to indulge or be like the world. If you can't get what you want, then want what you get. Reduce your expectations. Reduce your, 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 your taste. Then preach the right way. Remember, breathe in long time, breathe out. For us all, exercise is good. Keep company of believers always. John 16:33. Jesus has overcome for us. And then we'll look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. The momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. Then you have Psalm 55, verse 22. He said, cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be forsaken. Accept Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior today, and it will be well with you in Jesus' name.
this is a reminder. Um, from after the final prayer, eating and resting, which is our lunch, our lunch break, we start till one ten. Then, when you hear the bell from one ten, wherever you are, you start coming inside because. We are expected to gather inside again for a film show. And, have, and prepare, your, prepare all your questions and you will be given opportunity to ask them tomorrow during question and answer time. So take notes. And this, your congressional song, the, the printout that was given to you should not be thrown away because we will be used tomorrow again. So it's time for prayer.